Ah. Trying to get my voice working. <clears throat> oh, dear me. I've been struggling with this all through this series. It's really annoying. And it's probably annoying you as well, but I can assure you it annoys me far more than you. This constant choking uh, as I speak. Oh, yes, yes, I have seen people about it. I got one of these to help. But there you go. Right, where am I? Yes, it's number 18. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, Isabella Bird's journey into the heart of darkness. And uh, she's um, off to Taiping. And in theory, she's going to be staying with uh, uh, Hulo, but eventually, um, at the moment, it's Maxwell that she's staying with. And she's traveling up the river to, uh, to go to Taiping, where Maxwell's got uh, the, his residency all laid out there. And I'll talk about that specific uh, item in the next blog. But in the meantime, let's just take a look at what she sees when she arrives. In fact, you can, if you go up the Teluk River now, right this moment, I mean, ignore the uh, MCO and all those sort of inconvenient uh, uh, restrictions upon your movements because of the, the plague, ignore all that, um, just go up the river and you will find charcoal factories and a black sort of earth you find a sort of a, a haze hanging over you uh, and a muddy river bank and f covered in old logs and coal and rusty uh, sheds and, and railway tracks and so on. And you'll think, oh, that must be so old. Well, I can assure you that when Isabella Bird visited there in 1879, that's exactly what it looked like. It looks much the same now. And she said it was a dismal swamp. There you go. Now then, uh, there have been many places that she said this is uh, uh, the most godforsaken place. This is the most forgotten, uh, out of the uh, out of the running place. This is this is even worse than Clang. <laughs> you know, and Clang is uh, was it misdriven? Uh, her first impressions of these places were not particularly um, uh, good ones, let's put it that way. Uh, she seemed to have a low opinion of even the animals that she saw. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I think she, what did she call the um, water buffaloes? Oh, I've written down what she called the water buffaloes. Uh, blah, 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 water buffalo. Oh, uncouth brutes. And I'm sure water buffaloes are not pretty uncouth, and you know, they haven't been to a decent school. They have, haven't really had uh, the, the, the privileges that a, a, a young lady from, from the, the British uh, Isles would have had in her upbringing. So uncouth brutes, and that, that was just the water buffalo. So <clears throat> she felt terribly superior to everybody when it comes down to it. But she liked to rough it, and she liked rough men, and she, well... You know, you, you, I trust you've been following the whole series and you would have got that impression uh, from her. Anyway, she now goes up the Teluk River and uh, it, it finds it's a dismal swamp. And the first thing that she hears, and now she's going to a place called Taiping. Now, Taiping means heavenly peace. I've mentioned how it got its name. Uh, if you don't know her, uh, drop back and reread re or whatever. Anyway, Captain Speedy called it, uh, renamed Larut Taiping because he wanted it to sound like a peaceful place where all those troubles of 1874, where everybody was killing each other and so on, all that's forgotten. It's now a heavenly peace. It's all been sorted out. And the first thing that she hears when she gets there is that um, a Chinese gang had waylaid a uh, European revenue officer and uh, hacked him to pieces, you know, as, as often happens. In fact, um, we can find that uh, revenue officers and uh, other British officials uh, all over the place seem to get hacked to pieces every so often. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them don't hit, get into the history books other than there was a bit of an incident. You know, uh, and uh, we, Their names are forgotten, but you go to the graveyards <clears throat> and there they are. They're all over the place. Bahang was just heating up in Bahang. Uh, that's another thing that one could carry on about. But I'm, I'm you know, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. In fact, I'm not going to uh, cover that area because we're just dealing with Isabella Bird's 
right focus perhaps focus right so um she arrives and and uh, discovers this uh, heavenly piece is just you know we had another hacking has taken place and uh, she passes by now ibrahim's house now ibrahim if you remember uh, he was the uh, uh, the mintry the the minister the chief minister of the mintry besa is that it besa mintry mintry besa anyway he was the chief minister here uh, and he used to run the place as his own fiefdom he was like he was a sultan he was that powerful he was richer than any of the other sultans and uh, well, unfortunately he got on the wrong side of the uh, james birch conspiracy and uh, got packed off to the seychelles you know. uh, however his wife and i'm sure he had other wives because he seemed to collect various chinese female hostages at one point <clears throat> but uh, Anyway, I'm sure he had others, but uh, he, he, his, his wife still lived there in this, this house. Um, it was near to the place that uh, the British had uh, turned into a courthouse now. And in fact, it's called Kota Nga Ibrahim now. It's got a great museum. You should go, go and take a look at it. Um, <clears throat> oh, hang on. Let's get over. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's better. Uh, anyway, he... he, he uh, she passed, passed by the house in which uh, his wife was housed with her slaves. And they were just lolling about, and so I don't think she went and knocked and visited and said hi. But later on, later on, uh, well, that's that's another episode. Um, she she does go and have a chat with some of the um, well, Maharaja, Maharaja Leila's family. Well, well, that's I'm getting ahead of myself because. Now she she goes along and she goes into um, uh, typing and she's actually reasonably impressed by the uh, what she sees there because it's it's rebuilding everything. In fact, it's the handiwork of Captain Speedy. She's seeing there. He builds the marketplace. In fact, the marketplace is still there. It's the oldest uh, building in um, typing at the moment. It looks somewhat <clears throat> ramshackle and falling down, but you know. Uh, it, it's it, it was put up by um, Captain Speedy and it's kept there. It's this heritage. Uh, building nowadays uh, and in fact there's bits and pieces of his his handiwork eh, scattered around there's not much left left of them uh, there but he, he built the police stations he built the prisons he, he, he built the uh, uh, the residents houses and and, and uh, he built uh, um, a barracks and uh, uh, other, other facilities around uh, in fact you, you, the, the whole sort of market area of the of the thing would not exist with without uh, the work of Captain Speedy, and uh, well, she, she's reasonably impressed by all, all this. However, nobody else was. Uh, well, that is, they all forgot that Captain Speedy did that, did all that. In fact, the, 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 the problem with Captain Speedy was, and I, I've told you a bit about his his story, how he came to get the, into his position there, and uh, hiring the uh, the policeman from. Uh, 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 from India and equipping them. Well, he equipped the, he, he bought weapons from Krupp. You know, as Krupp was supplying weapons all, all over the place, and he bought the, these German weapons and he only equipped his his little police force. And and uh, they unfortunately they, they were working for Nai Ibrahim. And and uh, when James Birch got assassinated, it was a qu he, it was a question of uh, whose side is he on? Because Nai Ibrahim he kind of thought he was reasonably pro British. And as much as he got on with him uh, as, as a as an employee of his uh, and um, the Chinese he got on with the Chinese after after suppressing all the all the uh, the troubles he he actually um, uh, befriended the Gi Hing in particular the Gi Hing's mercenaries that have been brought in were a pretty rough lot and and were uh, probably uh, the more violent side of it but the Hei San actually were victors at the, at the end of the day, but uh, he, he he brought p about peace between the Heisan and the and the, the Qi Hing, uh, and he treated the Qi Hing with a lot of respect. Uh, Hugh Low considered this um, treatment of these um, Chinese, in particular this this rough lot, the Qi Hing, with the same respect that uh, would normally be given only to Europeans, was well, just beyond the pale. Goodness, and one can't help feeling that perhaps his complaints uh, had quite a lot to do with the fact that he was hand in mouth, hand in pocket, whatever. He had a close relationship with the Capitan China, uh, who was running Heisan. So, uh, you know, 
all depends on which Chinese you respect more. Anyway, Captain Speedy was was seen as someone who was too soft on the Chinese. And uh, during the, the uh, troubles after James Birch was assassinated, his inability to get the Chinese to um, uh, move quickly enough to be, um, uh, well, it's essentially he, he was given the task, he was, uh, he was supposed to grab hold of these Chinese and, uh, and force them to labour in building roads and all that, and, and he was not really into all that, because these were now people he was, he was trusted, gained, and uh, well, he kind of was a bit lax in, in doing that. Uh, that's probably very true. The British uh, really wanted him to just take a big stick and beat them until they did exactly as they were told, because that's what you know you had to do to show your loyalty. And Governor Jervois later on we became uh, rather suspicious. Uh, he, he wondered whether Captain Speedy had conspired with Nahibrahim Ibrahim to get rid of James Birch. Uh, James Birch's um, lack of sympathy for uh, uh, let's just say local customs um, might well have um, made Nahi Ibrahim think, well, you know, Captain Speedy would be an ideal man to be uh, the president here. He knows us. He's done very well here. He'll do as he's told. And uh, he, he, he's, he's, a, he's a man that we can trust and he'd be very useful for us uh, in, in building the state. So he, he was perhaps in favour of pushing forward uh, old Captain Speedy and uh, so getting rid of James Birch by illicit means might well have crossed quite a number of people's minds at that point uh, because they thought get rid of him and then we'll have Captain Speedy. Uh, so was Speedy in, the, in on it? No, I shouldn't think so. He, you know, he was after all pretty true blue. Um, but it was in his advantage that James Birch was killed. Just, uh, it would have been more in his, in his advantage if James Birch had been dismissed and replaced by him, but, uh, you know, I'm sure he wouldn't have gone as far as assassination. But Governor Gervois had his suspicions because Captain Speedy was, oh, what did he call him? An inferior sort. That's what he called him. An inferior sort. Now, Yes, he, he, he complained that the guy used to dress up uh, in leopard skins and parade around playing the bagpipes uh, to, to amuse the natives. Goodness. And he did, you know, and he did amuse the natives. So what did Captain Swe what did uh, Sweaten, Frank Sweaten say about him? Uh, he, he says something here interesting. Oh, funny. oh, here's what he said. Um, he said, his appearance and marching were impressive. But the sounds he drew from the bag and pipes were merely discordant noises. Well, there you go. Uh, the average Englishman would probably say that about bagpipe playing anyway, no matter what. And, yeah. uh, but it, it, it was the sort of thing that impressed the, his, his little army that he had there and the troops, and, and it amused people. Uh, but what didn't amuse people was once he'd... Um, uh, once. They, they'd had the Pankard Treaty, and and uh, and James Birch had been been killed, and then the uh, uh, the little war had taken place. Uh, uh, what what they wanted then was to get rid of Speedy because he was seen as part of the old guard, and they cut his pay. Uh, they um, made it obvious that they didn't like him, and Captain Speedy had. Uh, uh, well, he'd, he'd had financial problems, so he'd, he'd rushed off to Ireland. I, I do believe his uh, his wife's father had died, and they wanted to get to the will as quickly as possible and see what uh, they'd inherited. And it was a good time to just get out of the backstabbing way. Uh, he was then informed that um, perhaps it would be better if he didn't return. Well, Captain Speedy was buggered if that was going to be there, because uh, he rather fancied himself as the uh, the new uh, resident, you know. Uh, he thought he stood a chance. It, it was all just a matter of who was in power at that particular time. Uh, he didn't quite know that Swetnam was ambiguous about him, and uh, uh, and he didn't. He just didn't think Hugh Low was a, was the right sort of man. He was a backwards magistrate from there. He didn't know the region. He, he wasn't a tough character like him. Yeah, he was the right man for the job. So he went back. He went back to uh, Taiping, and. Uh, refused to resign and at that point uh, it became obvious that uh, 
you know, he was a useful man. He was on the spot. He knew the, knew the score. He, 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 was, he had his own little team there. So they made him assistant resident, assistant to Hulot. Hulot loathed him. Yes. Uh, the, one of the things that uh, Captain Speedy used to do was um, have be rather lavish in his um, uh, his banquet in. He believed in that uh, sort of robust. Um, uh, um, what's the word? It's like like, like the, the the military have around the table that all the captains uh, or or all the uh, officers sit and they get drunk and they, and they have rituals of various kinds of passion the port in the right direction and he, and he would do that and he, and he would regale people very loudly about these stories about him up the up the um, Nairobi River and uh, blah 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 with 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 uh, was it speak and um, who was the other one that uh, was up up there um, oh other name um, speak and and what was it Burton, that's the name. Yes, Sweatham said he was prone to tell strange stories of Burton and speak as if he had been with them. And one suspects that after he'd drunk a bit, um, he actually thought he had been with them because he'd, he'd been to all these areas and, and he'd, uh, you know, faced down uh, the uh, odd Maasai warrior and what have you. He, he, was, he was a guy that, that had, it was an old Africa hand, so he had lots of stories about hunting lions and all that. The usual nonsense. Some of them were true, but probably he, he he elaborated. He was a man who liked to elaborate. He was theatrical. In fact, uh, now he became assistant, assistant resident, although he called himself the resident of Taiping, uh, British resident there. But now he became assistant resident. Uh, he 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 got himself. 18 elephants and love to parade around on these elephants uh, and generally make a lot of noise and, and pomp and circumstance and turn up at places and, and uh, get things done. Uh, he was particularly keen on building a grand residence for, for, for himself, of course, and, and he was accused of skimping on all the other projects uh, and they, they were just thrown together, whereas his own uh, housing he spent an inordinate amount of money. Whether that was true or not, I'm not absolutely certain. You can go to Taiping and you, you can find um, a place called Captain Speedy's house near to Ngai Ibrahim, Kota Ngai Ibrahim, right next door to it. But um, it doesn't look like it's the right house. It doesn't look like it at all. It looks, you know, quite humble. Maybe they're going to dress it up or maybe they just called it that because everybody wants to know where Captain Speedy was. Uh, but... Um, his house, uh, there is a place that seems to be uh, connected with him and, and all you can see is the pillars in which it was built and, and it, it looked like it probably was a bit uh, extravagant and it's subsequently fallen down uh, in uh, later years and, and been neglected. But <clears throat> maybe, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a matter of truth in this, but mm, yeah, compared to what other people were doing, he was a man who rebuilt Taiping at this point and uh, you know uh, he, he was um, oh, what's it say uh, here um, blah 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 too friendly with the Chinese we've got for that convinced that Speedy was you know, that and just no, uh, oh that's right yes I've forgot the Durian Sabatan well Hugh Lowe eventually eventually found something to do with Captain Speedy after nagging others and and uh, muttering behind their back <clears throat> to get rid of this man we've got to get rid of him it's, it's just impossible i uh, i don't know what he's going to do next is uh it's inconsistent uh you know governor to have well yes inferior sorts inferior sorts not, not our kind uh how do we get rid of him well they moved him sideways oh captain speedy you have done such a great job built and typing now we we need real architects and real builders here but we do have another job for you this Sabadang durian up the road there it needs a lot of work doing you're the man to, uh, you're you know get down on the ground floor and, and just drag these people up by their bootstraps you know you're the guy to go out there and do it and he out speedy he knew full well what this meant uh, it meant another cut in pay it meant he was now 
chief what? Uh, chief city planner? Uh, this is not, he knew that wasn't really his cup of tea and yet uh, he, he'd been doing that in typing because he, you know, he knew what was necessary there but in Sabatang, he didn't care. These were, weren't his people really. Sabatang, Durian, I don't even know where it is myself. I, I'm, I'm sure if we were doing this documentary we would go and find that place and take a look at it and, and I'm sure it's a wonderful, beautiful place nowadays but in those days uh, one suspects it might well have been uh, the, the pits and at that point he decides to call it quits because he's thoroughly depressed. All this carping about his behaviour behind the back. It, it all gets, gets to him and he hasn't got the job he really wanted. And so uh, he's got a bit of money now, doesn't really need this job. Uh, so they go back to the UK where uh, basically, uh, well Captain Speedy was never very good with money and he's even less good with other people's money. So, so we, he, he gets... He gets a bit broke eventually and, and has to take another job with the colonial officer who sent him off to Ethiopia, which is okay by him. He knows Ethiopia and he goes there and he hangs around and he apparently he tells tales to the people, um, the, the young officers that uh, he was assigned to as an assistant because uh, he spoke the language, he knew the big idea. Yeah. He was seen as, as, a, as a morale booster more than anything else. Oh, Oh yes, so and so and so. And so. You just, you've just got to talk to the the headman there and uh, tell, tell him about me. Tell, you know, I'll talk. I'll talk to him. Don't worry. I'll go. I'll do the deal, and everything will be fine. We, we can sort this problem out. But he, this is how he would have done it, and uh, he did that for about eight years. Real hardship, um, sort of uh, uh, job. Um, that nobody else would have wanted to have done, but uh, he, he did that, he, he, he got his pay, and, he, and uh, eventually he retires to Shropshire, and at the age of 73 dies. Not of malaria. So, he probably caught a cold or something like that. So, this is the place that uh, old uh, 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 Isabella has turned up in, and, um, well, what she, what she say, says here, Yes, despite all that carping about him, she found the place full of his work. So I kind of feel that uh, he was uh, more eccentric than incompetent. Anyway, so there you are, I've just rescued his, his uh, reputation. So like, subscribe, and uh, like, subscribe, is it subscribe, like, share anyway like subscribe share comment i forgot to do that in the last one you know oh, and i saw that and i thought why did i say that well the answer is because it's boring to say that but everybody says that at the end of these things in order that you will subscribe because we need the subscriptions we need to get this up to 2000 subscribers then well i don't know who knows what the youtube channel will behold will will create I'm, you know, I'm just uh, uh, a dreamer oh well farewell until the next one Ooh, what are we going to be talking about next one oh yes that's going to be interesting hmm anyway bye <laughs>